Hey, this is Mr. Buffington, and this is our lesson five on replacement sets for pre-algebra. And we're going to talk about what a replacement set is and then how we use them. Our, a set in math is just a series of numbers or a group of numbers that you're going to use and substitute into an equation. They'll typically look like this, what you see right here. Like this is an example of a set that includes the numbers negative one, positive two, positive four. Let's practice just a little bit with sets, and I think it'll make a little bit more sense. So if we're asked to solve this equation, n plus 5 equals 9, some number plus 5 equals 9, and we're given that the solution is either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So our replacement set are the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what we're going to do is go ahead and substitute those numbers 0 in for n, we're going to solve for that. So we'll substitute 0 for n. 0 plus 5 is equal to 9. 5 is equal to 9. That's not going to work. So now I'll go on to the next number, 1. And I'll substitute the value of 1 in for n. Now it's 1 plus 5 is equal to 9. 6 is equal to 9. Again, in Mr. Buckingham's class, not going to happen. So let's try this again. Go on to the next number, 2. 2 plus 5 is equal to 9. Do I get it now? 2 plus 5 is 7. That is not equal to 9. So that's not going to work either. I'll move on to the third or fourth number, which is 3. 3 plus 5 is equal to 9. 3 plus 5 is actually 8. So that is not equal to 9. So I'm going to my final number, 4. I'm going to substitute that in for the value of n. 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. 9 is equal to 9, and that one is correct. So the value of 4 is the correct answer for this equation. All right, so I was given a set of numbers to re replace or substitute into that equation. I was able to solve for which one was correct. So now my answer would be that n is equal to 4 for this equation. Now, you could have looked at that equation and said, yeah, I know 4 plus 5 is 9. Um, but the point is, we're going to get into some more complicated equations. So I just wanted to show you the pattern that you, you'll use. You'll be given a set of numbers. You'll substitute them in for the variable in the equation, solve for all of them until you find the correct answer, and then say, yeah, n is equal to 4. All right, let's go ahead and solve. Again, we did, just did this one, n plus 5 equals 9. We solved that one, 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. So therefore, n in this case is equal to 4. We just solved that one. So now we're going to move on to a second one here. I'm going to divide our screen, and we'll solve this next one. Using the same process, we're going to substitute values from the set, starting with 0, into this equation. 8 divided by 0 is equal to 4. Now, you know you can't divide a number by 0. So this one here will give you, if you plug it into your calculator, you'll get an error of some kind. It's not going to work out. So that one is not right. Let's go on to the next one. 1, substitute that in there. 8 divided by n, 8 divided by 1 is equal to 4. 8 divided by 1 is actually 8. 8 is not equal to 4. So we're going to move on to our next number. 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. 8 divided by 2 actually is equal to 4. So in this case, n is equal to 2. Now, in some equations, not in equations, I shouldn't say, no, yeah, you could get some equations where you get multiple answers. All right? But in this case, you're going to get one. Um, with inequalities, you'll get more than one answer oftentimes. But with equations like this, just straightforward equations, you're going to get one solution. Now, we could substitute the values of 3 and 4 into this equation to test and see whether they'll work or not. 8 divided by 3 is definitely not 4. And 8 divided by 4 is 2, so it's not 4. So we can test them. And sometimes, you see how I just sort of spoke it? I tested it inside my head until I got to the right answer, and that's okay, too. Um, when, you're sub when you're submitting work, you want to show all of your work, though. 
All right, let's move on to one that's a little bit different. Um, we're going to solve this equation. Oh, this one's not an equation, is it? That one's an expression. When you get an expression like this, and your set is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, what you're going to get is what you call a solution set. You're going to get a set of answers, n plus 2. These are our values for n, so I'll say 0 plus 2, which is equal to 2. Now I'll go on to 1 plus 2, which is equal to 3. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. 3 plus 3 is equal to 5. And 4 plus 3, oh, 2, which is equal to 6. There's a typo there. So with this one here, our solution set, we could actually say is equal to, our solution set is, we would write it with our squiggly line, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We'll end up with a nice squiggly line there as well. All right. So that's how we would say with our solution set, Again, this expression here has us say whatever our values for n is, add 2. So our solution is just going to be a set of numbers, a new set of numbers that are all increased by 2. Okay. Again, a simple process of adding 2 to numbers, but the difference here is that you're not getting just one answer. You're getting what we call a solution set or a series of numbers or a group of numbers that are all our solutions when we're given that one. All right, here we go. Let's try this one out. Again, I was saying earlier, you're going to get more complicated equations. Here's an example of a more complicated equation. So our more complicated equation, let's go. We're going to substitute the values from our set into this equation everywhere we see the letter n. So in this case, we see the value n twice. I can highlight that for you. n is here and here. So we're going to substitute the value, in this case, 1. That's the first one in our set. We're going to substitute that in there both times. 3 times 1 plus 4 is equal to 2 times the quantity of 1 minus 1 plus 8. We're going to try and get a solution. 3 times 1 is 3. Plus 3 plus 4 is 7. So on the left side, I'm going to get to 7. On the right side, I have 2 times 1 minus 1. Well, that means 2 times 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. So I'm going to have to go down one line farther. 0 plus 8 is 8. Now, we know 7 is not equal to 8, not in my class at least. I don't know. Maybe if you have a different teacher, that would be the right answer. But for me, no, that's not going to work. So let's move on to the next number, 2. And we're going to substitute that in everywhere we see the letter n. So 3 times 2 plus 4 is equal to 2 times the quantity of 2 minus 1 plus 8. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. And then over on the right side, the quantity of 2 minus 1. So I'm going to have 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And 10 is equal to 2 plus 8, which is also 10. So that one is our correct answer. I'll put a circle all the way around that one. And that gives us our correct answer. So n, in this case, is equal to 2. Now, again, we can check 3 and 4, but what you'll find is that they're not correct. In this one, again, an, a regular equation, no absolute values or anything crazy that throws them off. Just a regular equation with a simple order of operations, you're going to get one solution just like we did here. n is equal to 2. All right? And we did that by solving. Biggest mistake here is that we'll solve all the way down to the bottom, get 10 for our solution. 10 is equal to 10. So that means n is equal to 10. And that's not how we do it. We have to remember that n is our variable at the top. And our solution has to come from our set. Our replacement set gives us our solution. All right? So that's going to be. now. 
with inequalities, you may get um, a series of answers. Again, a solution set. We're going to substitute these into this inequality. With inequalities like this, less than, or if you had greater than, less than, and or equal to, greater than, or equal to, when you get an inequality, you have to substitute every single number from the set, and your solution may have multiple answers. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We'll start out by substituting the value of 0 in there. 3 times 0 plus 2 is less than 5. 3 times 0 is 0. Plus 2 is less than 5. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 is definitely less than 5. We'll give that one a little check mark. And 0 is part of our solution. Good. Let's go on to the next one. 3 times 1. Again, the next number from our set is going to go into that inequality. 3 times 1 plus 2 is less than 5. 3 times 1 is 3. Plus 2 is less than 5. Wait a minute. 5 is less than 5. Now, 5 is actually not less than 5. 5 is equal to 5. So this one here gets the x, and that's not part of our solution. Let's go on to the number 2. 3 times 2 plus 2 is less than 5. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is less than 5. Well, that's not going to work out. 8 is definitely not less than 5. This one here also gets the x. And move on to the third one. Notice with this one, even though I've gotten some the right one right answer, I'm going to continue on because it's an inequality and I have to make sure I check every single answer to see if they work. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 is less than 5. That one also does not work. So 3 does not work. And 4, we're going to substitute in there. 3 times 4 plus 2 is less than 5. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. 14 is definitely not less than 5, so we're going to X that one out. There we go. So our solution set here, the one, the only, in this case, the only solution for N that works is that N has to be equal to the set of 2, or 0, I'm sorry. See, so I noticed I did that. I looked down here and said, oh, 2. But you have to substitute n. Our solution set is that n is equal to 0. The only time that this, using this set, when this inequality is true, is for the number 0. So n, our solution set, would be 0. Now. In some cases, especially with inequalities, you'll end up having multiple answers that work. You would list them all here in order from smallest to largest. All right? So that's our lesson on so, um, replacement sets and solution sets. Hope it's been helpful. Have a wonderful day.